The world's most famous painting is hiding a secret in plain sight. And once I show you what Leonardo deliberately concealed in the Mona Lisa, you'll never see her the same way again. It's not her smile. It's not a code or conspiracy. It's something far more ingenious that reveals why this painting has hypnotized viewers for 500 years while similar portraits were forgotten. I'm Oleg G from Art Explained Simply and Quickly. And today, I'm revealing what Leonardo da Vinci never wanted you to consciously notice about the Mona Lisa, but made sure your brain would detect anyway. Look at her eyes for a moment, not what they look like, but where they're focused. They're looking directly at you, following you around the room, or so the common story goes. But that's not actually the secret. The true genius is that Leonardo created two completely different paintings merged into one. Depending on which part of the painting you focus on, your brain processes a completely different image and emotional experience. Let me show you something remarkable. Cover the right half of her face with your hand. Look at just the left side. What do you see? A woman who appears reserved, perhaps even slightly melancholy. Her mouth turns slightly downward. Her gaze is cool and evaluating. Now, cover the left half and look only at the right side of her face. Suddenly she's warm, subtly smiling, almost flirtatious. This deliberate asymmetry isn't a mistake or a artistic quirk. It's a carefully engineered psychological effect that Leonardo developed after years of studying human perception. Leonardo understood something that neuroscientists would only confirm centuries later. Our brains process facial expressions differently depending on which side of the face we're observing. The right hemisphere of our brain, which processes the left visual field, responds more strongly to negative emotions. The left hemisphere, processing the right visual field, is more attuned to positive emotions. By creating this dual expression, Leonardo ensured that viewers would experience a constantly shifting emotional response without ever consciously understanding why. But this facial asymmetry is just the beginning. Look at the background behind Mona Lisa. Notice how the horizon line doesn't match up? The landscape on her right side sits noticeably lower than on her left. This wasn't carelessness from one of history's most meticulous artists. It was another deliberate perceptual manipulation. Combined with the facial asymmetry, it creates a subtle visual instability that keeps our brains constantly working to resolve the image, preventing us from ever feeling like we've fully seen the painting. Let's step back and understand the historical context that makes these visual tricks so revolutionary. When Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa around 1503, portraiture followed strict conventions. Women were typically depicted in profile, showing their most flattering angle. Backgrounds were often flat or highly stylized. Expressions were expected to convey dignity and status rather than psychological complexity. Leonardo shattered all these conventions. Not only did he position his subject directly facing the viewer, but he also employed his sfumato technique, the smoky, soft focus effect created by layering ultra-thin glazes of paint. This technique is particularly evident around the corners of Mona Lisa's mouth and eyes, precisely where we look to interpret expressions. By blurring these crucial areas, Leonardo creates ambiguity that our pattern-seeking brains continuously try to resolve. Recent scientific analysis reveals just how meticulous this effect was. Using multispectral imaging, Researchers found that Leonardo applied up to 40 separate layers of translucent glaze in some areas, each layer perhaps only a few micrometers thick. This wasn't just artistic technique, it was psychological engineering designed to create an image that would continuously activate the viewer's perceptual systems. The identity of the subject herself adds another layer of mystery. While traditionally identified as Lisa Gherardini, the wife of Florentine merchant Francesco del Giocondo, competing theories abound. Some suggest she was a lover of Giuliano de' Medici, others that she's an idealized woman, or even a feminized self-portrait of Leonardo himself. 
This biographical uncertainty mirrors the perceptual uncertainty Leonardo built into the painting. What's particularly fascinating is how Leonardo used his scientific knowledge in service of this effect. He had spent years dissecting human faces to understand the underlying musculature that creates expressions. He knew precisely which facial muscles contract to create a smile and how these actions affect other features. This anatomical knowledge allowed him to create an expression that seems to shift depending on where you focus and how long you look. The painting setting adds another dimension to its psychological impact. The landscape behind Mona Lisa isn't just any backdrop. It's a dreamlike, primordial world that seems to exist outside of specific time or place. The winding paths, unusual rock formations, and hazy atmosphere create a sense of mystery that complements the subject's enigmatic presence. Notice how there's no clear boundary between the figure and background. Another way Leonardo creates perceptual ambiguity. Let's consider the painting's physical journey, which has contributed to its mystique. Unlike most artworks that remained in churches or private collections, the Mona Lisa traveled with Leonardo to France when he was invited by King Francis. After Leonardo's death, it entered the royal collection, was displayed in Napoleon's bedroom, and eventually found its home in the Louvre. This unusual journey helped cement its importance. But its true rise to global fame came in 1911 when it was stolen from the Louvre by Vincenzo Perugia, who believed it belonged in Italy. The empty space where the painting had hung became a tourist attraction in itself. People came to see the absence of the Mona Lisa. When it was recovered two years later, its celebrity status was secured. What we're looking at today isn't just a masterpiece of Renaissance art, but a cultural phenomenon shaped by centuries of history. The physical properties of the painting itself contribute to its enigmatic quality. Leonardo painted on a poplar wood panel rather than canvas, creating a different light absorption effect. The wooden surface allows light to penetrate the layers of paint before being reflected back to the viewer creating a subtle luminosity that's impossible to fully capture in reproductions. This is why seeing the actual painting provides a different experience than viewing even the highest quality digital image. Modern scientific analysis has revealed other secrets. Infrared reflectography shows that Leonardo originally included columns on either side of the figure, which he later painted over. X-ray fluorescence revealed that he changed the position of her fingers. These pentimenti, or changes of mind, give us insight into Leonardo's creative process and perfectionism. The painting we see is the result of years of refinement and reconsideration. The size of the Mona Lisa surprises most first-time viewers. At just 30 by 21 inches, it's much smaller than people expect based on its cultural significance. This intimate scale was intentional. Leonardo designer designed it for close viewing in a private setting, not for public display. When we see it today, surrounded by crowds and protected by bulletproof glass, we're experiencing it in a context completely different from what the artist intended. Let's return to that asymmetrical face, the secret hiding in plain sight. This technique, combining different emotional states in a single portrait, was unprecedented in Western art. Yet Leonardo didn't announce this innovation or draw attention to it. He understood that its power lay precisely in its subliminal effect, in the way it creates a dynamic viewing experience without the viewer understanding why. The painting's influence extends far beyond the art world. It has been appropriated, parodied, and referenced countless times in popular culture, from Marcel Duchamp's mustachioed version to Andy Warhol's silk screens to its appearance in films, advertisements, and memes. This cultural ubiquity makes it difficult to see the painting with fresh eyes, to experience the perceptual ambiguity Leonardo so carefully engineered. What makes the Mona Lisa truly revolutionary isn't any single feature, but the way it engages the viewer in an active perceptual process. 
Unlike most artwork that presents a static image for our consumption, the Mona Lisa seems to change as we look at it. It resists definitive interpretation. It keeps us looking, sensing there's something we haven't quite grasped. 500 years after its creation, it continues to do exactly what Leonardo designed it to do, Creci, creator, an endless loop of visual fascination. If you're intrigued by how artists use psychology and perception to create enduring masterpieces, hit that subscribe button right now and join our community of art explorers. Every week on Art Explained Simply and Quickly, we uncover the hidden secrets behind history's most influential artworks. What aspect of the Mona Lisa fascinates you most? Is it the technical brilliance, the historical significance, or the psychological complexity? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective might help others see new dimensions in this endlessly fascinating work. If this video helped you appreciate Leonardo's genius in a new way, give it a thumbs up. It helps more people discover these incredible stories of art history. See you in the next exploration.